This week's video is about lenses outside the normal range. So wide angles, telephotos, how best to use them, and more obscure things like fisheye lenses, tilt and shift lenses, and macro lenses. This video and the others in this series are part of my technical fundamentals course, which builds to create an entire basic beginner's guide to all the technical aspects of photography. If you like this video, hit like, obviously subscribe to get notifications, stick any comments below if you've got any questions, and I'll try and answer as best I can. But for now, let's crack on with lenses outside the normal. Beyond prime and zoom, the other main types of lens are wide angles, normals, and telephotos. Normal, we've already covered. Basically, normal is something that approximates normal sight, which on full-frame DSLRs is around 50 millimeters. Wide angles obviously allow for a wider angle of view. They are smaller numbers. Common wide angle lenses are 24 mil, 28 mil, 35 mil. Then when you get longer than 50 millimeters, usually starting at around the 70 millimeter length, you're into what's called telephotos. Um, between about 70 and 105 millimeters is often referred to as a short telephoto. And from about 200 millimeters upwards, because they do go up to about 1200 millimeters if you've got bottomless pockets, those are referred to as long telephotos. I wouldn't worry about that too much. It'll make you sound a bit more professional, but essentially just knowing what the number is is fine. Don't forget, of course, all of those numbers are related to the full frame sensor. Okay, the numbers will be different depending on how big your sensor is. What won't change though is the progression. A smaller number will still be a wider field of view, and a larger number will be a tighter field of view. You can't escape that, I'm afraid. Now outside the basic rules of exposure and underlying things of physics like sensor size, there aren't really any rules in photography. There are lots of conventions, don't get me wrong, there are lots of accepted ways to do things, but the only things you can't really break are the physics of how exposure works and the physics of things like sensor size. Beyond that, most things are kind of malleable. It's worth knowing some of these conventions though so that you can call on them when you want to and choose to break them when you want to. Now, one of the biggest conventions is how you use lenses. For example, wide angle lenses that take in a big field of view are commonly used for landscape photography. The reason being you want to get a lot in the shot. You, know, you want the drama of the river in the foreground sweeping all the way up to the middle ground to the peak in the distance. Normal to short telephotos are often used for portrait photography. They give a nice flattering uh, aspect to the face and to the body uh, because if you shoot somebody with a wide angle lens, try it, you get quite a lot of distortion. Whereas a 50 mil, starting from there and going up to 70, 85, 105 mil, gives a much more flattering look to a portrait. I personally use my 85 millimeter for portraits all the time. It's an absolute beauty. Beyond that, by the time you get into longer lengths, so 150, 200, 300 millimeters, these lenses are ideal for anything where you want to get closer to something happening further away from you, whether it's on a five side football pitch or a boat out at sea or wildlife. Those long lenses are often used for action, sports, wildlife photography. Now those are the conventions, okay? Doesn't mean you always have to shoot a wide angle lens in landscape, a long lens for action photography. I have done countless shoots and countless images where I have totally inverted those things, where I've done landscapes with a long lens because what I wanted was a long way off, or I've deliberately got a very wide angle lens to shoot sports with. Like I say, a convention is a convention. It's good to understand it so that occasionally you can play by the rules when you feel it's right, but from time to time there's no harm at all in deliberately breaking the convention. Besides wide, normal and telephoto, there are all sorts of crazy, odd, weird little lenses out there. The three main ones you're liable to come across are a fisheye lens, which like the name implies gives you an extremely wide angle view and distorts things enormously. Uh, if you've ever filmed yourself or anything on a GoPro at wide setting, you'll know what a fisheye looks like. Then there are tilt and shift lenses. Uh, they actually function a lot like cameras like these do in that they allow the lens to move independent of the back of the camera, allowing you to correct verticals and things like architectural photography and increase depth of field when you're doing close-up still life work. Uh, unless you're about to do tons of that sort of work, I wouldn't bother investing. I just rent one on the rare times you need them because they are very expensive. Lastly, the most common one you'll come across that's a bit of a novelty and it's actually worth getting, in my opinion, is a macro lens. Um, a macro lens lets you get in very, very, very close. Something like this will let you get into full life size. So I could basically put this on the camera, zoom right in to my say, thumbnail, God knows why I want to, and I would have a full size image of the thumbnail on the back of the sensor. So when I blow it up, 
absolutely enormous. So you do very, very detailed close-ups. So if you like you know, photographing insects or like photographing little, little models of things, this is brilliant. I find it useful just full stop. It's actually quite a nice portrait lens to this one. You'll see that quite a lot of zooms claim to have a macro function on them. There might be a mark around the focusing ring that says macro. It's highly unlikely this is actually a macro setting. What it means is it'll just let you focus a bit closer. Uh, zooms don't tend to go down to anything like one-to-one -one because as you can tell, this has got a lot of optics in it and it gets its close-up ability by it being able to focus quite a long way from the camera body. You try doing that with a zoom, you're gonna end up with a zoom that's absolutely enormous, very, very heavy and very, very expensive. Uh, these though, macro lenses are worth investing money in. If you've got money to burn, I'd say this is one of your first little novelty purchases that's well worth having. There you go wide angles, telephotos, and some other less used lens types. Tune in next week when I talk about maximum aperture, and then we'll wrap everything up to do with lenses before moving on to other topics. There'll be a full in-depth blog post matching this video on my blog at photosmudger.com. But for now, stick like if you're enjoying things, obviously subscribe to get notifications, and I'll see you next week.